Warning, this content is for entertainment and educational purposes only. All right, next question here is from John W. John asks, hey, Paul, I'm trying to understand my reaction I had to 19 Nours. Um, I was running testosterone, growth hormone, primable, and a masteron. And later, I added trend up to 400 milligrams with no issues. But then I swapped trend for MPP at 200 milligrams per week. Without changing anything else, I developed nipple sensitivity and a small gyno lump. I had to resolve this by dropping the NPP and using AI in a K in Kaber. Why would NPP cause this reaction when Trend E did not? All right, so there are multiple things to unpack here. I'm going to give people the disclosure that I always give you: and do not use Kaber. Just stay away from that shit. It is a dopamine agonist and you can really fuck yourself up permanently using dopamine agonists and, and interfering with the dopaminergic pathway. Dopamine agonists come with the risk, you know, the K -bray, if you can look it up if you want. Uh, dopamine agonist withdrawal syndrome can be a major, major issue. And the reason why people use dopamine agonists is to address high prolactin, which I almost never see on blood work. You shouldn't treat a problem that may or may not be there. It's not to say that high prolactin can't be an issue. It can in certain situations. I have seen high prolactin, but it's very, very uncommon. If you suspect that you have a prolactin issue, probably drop the offending compound that's causing the high prolactin and maybe get a prolactin test to see if you actually have high prolactin before you go the route of using a dopamine agonist. I wouldn't proactively use CABR to treat gyno. It's, 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 it's a really, 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 really poor choice. I would not do that. It's not worth the risk. It's not probably not even adding anything, to be honest with you. Um, there are other things that we need to consider as well. And now that I got that out of the way, we can talk, you know, the other mechanisms that are at play here. Trembolone and MPP, while they're both 19 nors, have very different mechanisms of action. Now, both are synthetic progestins and have a binding affinity with the progesterone receptor, but NPP's binding seems to be much stronger than Trembolone's. Nandrolone also converts to estradiol, while be it at a lower level than testosterone, whereas trembolone does not reduce to estradiol as well. Nandrolone also seems to have some sort of mechanism where it upregulates aromatase expression from testosterone. I, you, there's, I don't know that there's any studies out there that show it. I've looked, I haven't found it, but Every goddamn time I look at somebody running uh, nandrolone along with testosterone and you take a look at their blood work afterwards, their estradiol is significantly higher. And so you get this situation where you have uh, increased <laughs> binding affinity with the progesterone receptor, you have increased estradiol, and then you, you know, maybe maybe there's some prolactin. You, usually, usually when prolactin is high, it's going to be in an environment where estrogen is already high as well. And then you set up this perfect storm for rapid gyno growth, for growing boobies. If your prolactin is truly that high, high enough that it warrants treatment with CABR, you're going to be lactating from your nipple. And I very, very, very rarely see that with guys. I mean, it does happen. It does happen on occasion. I, I had it happen when, when I ran trend when I was in my in my 20s, but I was running a really fucking stupid dose of it. Uh, I don't even remember. It was, it was, it was pr pretty, pretty gnarly <laughs> dose of it. And I started, you know, I could squeeze milk out of my nipples. This was pre gyno surgery. And remember since the action of the nandrolone with the progesterone receptor is more than, than, uh, than trembolone, progesterone seems to enhance estrogen's gyno causing effect when the two are combined together so you have this perfect storm you'll see guys that get high estrogen and have no issues with gyno 
you see guys run DECA or Nandrolon by itself, and the same thing, and they have no issues, but then they combine it with testosterone and have this higher rate of aromatization with higher estradiol levels, and you put the high affinity for progest the progesterone receptor together with the higher estradiol, and then you've got a recipe for boobies. And that's when guys run into problem. It, it, it doesn't seem to be as big of a problem with Trembolone. But that's why NPP combined with testosterone. I, I would definitely never run trend in NPP close together or side by side. That, that's, that's just asking for trouble. You're doubling up on the problems. That's just a no-no along with, with testosterone. So that's what's going on here, man. You, you set yourself up. If you want a deeper dive into the stuff, I have the Science of Anabolics Eat course that I've done with Kurt Havens. He and I go into great detail about how all these mechanisms work. Uh, it, it is the deep dive into how cycles work. If you want to pick it up over on the website, the link is in the video description below. It's like 60 hours or so of content on there. But if you want to go deep down the rabbit hole, that, that's where you can go do it.